Hey everybody, how's it going today? Hey, so now we're back on regular, our regularly scheduled topics now that we've gone through the whole, all, the sudden juggalo appearance. So now that we've gotten past the thing, let's stop clowning around. Ah. So Anthrocon happened, and Anthrocon went rather well. Um, wasn't too eventful, I didn't do anything too crazy. Um, I'll have a smattering of personal stories um, from the convention ever here here and there um, as sort of what is called in the business evergreen episodes where if like I get sick or if I don't I uh, can't you know or if nothing big is happening and nothing major is happening to report on um, I'll just kind of put it as sort of a freebie episode sort of like a thing just to put up because uh, those stories can be told at any time um, as you know, I miss my glasses, so my, my face is more barren um, than it usually is. But at least I didn't leave my suit and tie behind this time. I still find it very hilarious that when um, I called up the hotel and said, Oh, did I leave my suit and tie there? And they're like, Oh, can you describe it for me? A bright orange tie? Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, we got that. Guess not. Yeah. Why does nobody else wear bright orange ties? I don't understand. I mean, come on, where's your fashion sense, people? But anyways, that being said, um, if you notice the title of the video, it's sort of clickbaity. I don't like doing that, but here we are. Um, so apparently, it was sort of mentioned at the end of closing ceremonies, if you had attended, Kage had noted that there is a new um, hotel being opened up the, um, in in uh, AC uh, in for Anthrocon called the AC Hotel. Um, there is a picture of that hotel that I took um, that I took uh, the last that last night, um, particularly around the evening time. Um, so most normal people go to conventions to take pictures of furry suits, and I apparently go to freaking conventions to take pictures of buildings. What is with this guy? Little, little, little lost in the head, I think. But anyways, my 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 strange photo taking habits aside, um, so this is the picture of that new AC hotel. Um, it is not uh, just to cut to the cut to the cut in the vinegar. My my little question there is no, the AC hotel is not named after Anthrocon. Okay, the AC hotel is named after Antonio Can. Hannah, I believe his name was Antonio is his first name, but it was named after an arch. It's uh, the initials of an architect um, who you know basically came up with the sort of architectural design for this style of hotel. Um, it's apparently some sort of very minimalistic um, type of thing that is a cr uh, the selling point is that the millennials are into. No one really told me that, you know, no one really asked if I was into minimalist as a millennial myself. No one asked me if I was into sort of minimalistic um, sort of ar architecture design. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so where is this hotel located? And, you know, you know let's, let's get some details and stats and stuff like that or, or important information. So this is another picture I took of this hotel from... The top floor of the convention, the fourth floor of the David Lawrence Convention Center. So the David Lawrence Convention Center is where the you know, Anthrocon mainly takes place. As you can see, it's right next door. Um, and it's so next door, and this is just sort of speculatory on my part. Um, this is on the fourth floor. So if you're looking, if you've been to Anthrocon before, I'm going to kind of describe where this picture was taken. Um, the zoo um, is on the fourth floor at the very northern end of the building and if you go further down um, basically the hall sort of dead ends and that's sort of where I took this photo from so it's basically right at the north side of the convention center I believe it's the north um, if I, I can't recall quite but basically above where the spirit of Pittsburgh ballroom is um, and so I noticed something interesting about this, um, and it also kind of ties in with the bottom picture that I had taken. Um, 
the there's a weird little balcony like right there as you can see on that one side of the building on the david lawrence side um not on the other side of the building but on the david lawrence side i suspect and because that that seems to be right about at the plane where the balcony is for the david lawrence center so i suspect that you know in a few years they might decide to sort of you know have a bridge gapping those two buildings in some way shape or form sort of like how the Westin has a bridge going from um the west End to the convention center like this ac hotel might decide well we're going to make a bridge from this thing to the ac to the, from the ac hotel to the convention center the fact that they sort of aesthetically look alike similar in architectural design from the outside is sort of uh sort of a somewhat telling on that but also the fact that if you have a lot of people you know going to be in that hotel i don't know how big this hotel is going to be uh, or what the plan size is and the specs and all that um but it is going to open next month so the ac hotel will certainly be open by anthrocon 2019 <coughs> <coughs> excuse me so so that's interesting, and I think that, and, and there's another reason I think they might go the whole bridge sort of route, is that like first they'll cut down a lot of foot traffic on the on the ground line because like there's not a lot of people coming from to the David Lawrence from that direction, um, but the the only the quickest route from that hotel when I took my like little foot route and went to uh, the. Uh, take this picture I'm gonna edit that out rare edit right so when I went to take this picture the way you get to it via the sidewalks and the streets is like you'd have to like the, there's the Weston Bridge to from the Weston to the David Lawrence and then there's a the ground floor there's like a, a Jimmy John's sub shop and then you walk along the David Lawrence you take a left at the block and then you go under this very um creepy looking overpass outward there's like there's these trucks and like logistic parts of the convention center that aren't really like designed for like heavy foot traffic they're just kind of narrow and there's it, it, there, there's uh, it's an interesting little neighborhood um it did kind of like have like a weird feeling vibe to it like not like a oh this is cool and open like a lot of the open city streets it was more like a sort of a back alley-ish sort of a path so i think that in the hotel's best interest it would be better to have a way over that as opposed to walking it at street level but people will make do and i don't think you know with, with a furry convention going on there's going to be a lot of foot traffic going back and forth so it's not like you'd be going by yourself like i did to take this picture but you know it was still daylight and everything was fine and it wasn't that it wasn't that too bad but it it was kind of like something where certainly having a direct route up top would certainly be beneficial if that's not even planned it's probably already planned as i noted but that's just speculatory on my part anyway so hotel growth for anthrocon is very is, is a good thing because you know you know hotels are always in demand during that time of for that convention and everything like that and it'll certainly keep it competitive um certainly um anthrocon um so the big thing is like well how did it do as far as numbers go and uh so for that we have our updated chart numbers so it was like 8407 i believe the number was off the top of my head it was it was just shy it was like a few hundred shy of what midwest fur fest had in 2017 so midwest fur fest is still the largest furry convention in the world at this point um, on the chart to the left here any convention that hasn't happened yet um, is projected numbers so midwest fur fests over 10,000 is a projected number um, something tells me that's going to be a hard number to reach um harder than probably originally thought particularly with the hotel room debacle um where people were trying to get hotel rooms and a lot of people couldn't quite get them um i know that's affected some of the people i know that usually go to the convention and they say that they're not going this year um due to that and life concerns um people i normally roomed with um are going to set it out this year 
I'm still sort of on the fence. Um, I will try to attend and I will try to make do, but if I don't, then I don't. But, you know, that is what it is. I'll still be making that decision. I'll probably make a decision come about the fall, mid-fall area. Definitely before the whole, like, pre-order tickets go more expensive thing. Um, at the end of September. By the way, at the end of September, Midwest Fur Fest... Midwest Fur Fest pre-registered tickets usually get more expensive, so you need to make you should make a decision, and and you should pre-reg anyway because a lot of you didn't pre-reg last year and it caused some issues with the attendance thing, and that's another sort of thing that I think a lot of people might like back away a little bit from, given that uh, that was an issue last year. So given like like I remember th like a, a, like some issues with M MFF and how it was run last year. There is a new, like, they were trying to get used to the space that they had, for sure. Like, they, it was their first time, usually, in that, in that large convention center. They were using new technology. There's a lot of new stuff that they had to get used to. And they had a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. Um, Anthrocon this year ran smooth as glass. Like, um, I usually... I usually keep tabs on Twitter, you know, on the Twitter feeds and, and everything like that, you know, to see if there's any, like, interesting things going on that I'm not seeing or anything like that. Most of the drama and issues that occurred with the convention this year were mostly interpersonal issues between attendees. Um, you know, what they were, like, what banners they were, like, what um, little stickers they were wearing or, you know, what... Um, you know, the, the Jason AFX versus Pepper Coyote debacle or little hissy, tissy, tissy, tissy thing that happened. Those are interpersonal attendee sort of issues that really the, the staff can't really have that much control over. Um, there, I know, um, unfortunately, one of the um, YouTubers that, you know, helped, you know, plug my channel on Friday had an issue with that kind of soured the convention for them and that's unfortunate um and you know so those kind of things can happen despite the best um having it run very well otherwise the only time i had a really long line wait was the first time that uh that that you know, waiting for the elevator on thursday like that was the only time i had to wait in line for the elevator for a really long time and um other times i would like take the stairs because i'm crazy like that but like there even then the elevators were usually pretty clear like things ran pretty smoothly i didn't see any big issues um the only thing that really jumped out at me um was or one of the uh, interesting little problem that uh, may be something that furry dealers have to deal with in the future hopefully it's not something that'll grow um but we had a report here from a neon slushy is it slushy yes neon slushy that um, they were finding some of their little trinkets disappearing from their tables. And um, that's unfortunate. Um, that shouldn't be happening. It's, uh, I don't know if it, you know, it's uh, some sort of larceny, petty larceny um, going on um, at the conventions. As conventions, you know, continue to grow, continue to get more expensive, and, you know, hotels and things like that, this, you know, costs. You know it can be kind of expensive to get to a convention but you should support the artists who are there because the artists are taking on more expense of you know renting out a piece a place where they can put their art to sell to you um, they're moving there they're traveling but they're also traveling with a bunch of art and a bunch of supplies so they're using up more gas or using up more you know energy and they're using up a lot of effort in order to get those things to you and you know you should respect that and unfortunately like it doesn't ha like if, if people continue to do petty larceny it adds up to bigger problems such as like now furry dealers are going to have to think about well how do i secure my small items do i bring like these plastic cases where like i do i like bring plastic cases where i can just set them down on the table and sort of somehow you know keep them from moving and you know make sure that people can't easily take these small things and stick them into their like purses and pocketbooks so i have to make these put these put them in these big plastic cases that now i'm gonna have to they're gonna have to deal with and like move them around i mean they're gonna have to come up with solutions to make sure that 
um, their trinkets remain secure while they're dealing with customers and that some people aren't like sort of sneaking some into their pockets and such. Um, you know, they shouldn't have to deal with that. And hopefully, you know, us furries can do better. And hopefully that, you know, if you, you know, sacrifice a little bit more, like maybe don't have that drink, you know, at the, the, the like, if you really want that, that badge, maybe not have that expensive meal, maybe kind of bring some, you know, food to tide you over, like some sandwiches to like replace a full hearty meal or an expensive meal or like eat something for like 10 bucks as opposed to like going out and eating for 25 you know plan and budget better um and and it's hard to say sometimes for people who are really in dire straits um but you know just um respect the artist's time and commitment to the community and i think things will go better um i don't think but this was like one tweet and there's some responses that indicated that yeah that was an issue hopefully that's not something um that will be an issue in the future um we certainly don't <laughs> another solution could be like convention staff could be like patrolling a little bit um but also that you know dealers are of course going to be more vigilant to see if they um if they see someone sneaking like product into their into their bag um I think the best thing, I don't, like I'm not a dealer and I don't have experience in that, but I think that the best idea would be if you suspect and you see someone sneak, like like see like someone grab something from your table and sneak it into their bag and walk off, um, you should get like have somebody like try to sneakily get their badge number and like greet oh so, well, hey how's it going how you doing it's like oh it's great to see you and then like look at their badge number and then report that badge number to the con ops and then you know you know try to you know try if there's one nearby obviously you can say hey dude that guy took something um and stuff like that or you know openly confront them about it i don't know like it's 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 a really it's a really difficult position and i don't know if i would be able to deal with that kind of thing but yeah, it's it's something that shouldn't be occurring, and unfortunately, it's sort of inner. That's sort of an interpersonal problem too. It's like attendees are causing the problems, right? Attend, and that's something that we as attendees have to understand is that we are just as much responsible for the enjoyment of other attendees as the con staff is. If we're stealing things of value from artists if we're if, if you're stealing from artists if you're um if you are not being true to your word and commitments if you are you know sort of doing things that you know ha you know harm the har harm the fun of others um with intent it can really wreck the the convention for other people and there's nothing that a convention chair or staff can do to prevent that sort of a thing. But uh, I guess one last thing about the numbers is is that uh, this is kind of a, a funny thing more than anything. Uh, this tweet sort of jumped out at me. Oh, well, uh, scientists like numbers and hypotheses. I'm guessing that the, that jump in the, in the 2016 fursuit parade numbers had to do with the fact that people wanted to, that, that the news got out about the first suit parade in 2015. Yeah, you don't say! Video bug card in the upper left corner of the screen. So, yeah, um, Kage apparently agrees with my assessment last year that um, a jump in for it, like, I, I basically made the video last year around the fact that the fursuit parade numbers dropped in 2017. And at that point, I was like, well, what does that mean? And I said, well, the attendance numbers increased as well. So clearly, something happened to influence more fursuiters to come in. And I said, well, my, my guess is that in 2015, they introduced the fursuit parade and that the fursuit, fursuiters told other fursuiters, it's like, you got to go to Anthrocon because this parade thing's out of... Uh, it's." It's crazy. We love it. It's good, and you go, you gotta go and do, check it out. So a lot of people influxed and did that in 2016. They did it in 2016, and they sort of tapered off 
to sort of the normal sort of growth in 2017. And I did that whole video on that last year. Um, the top thing here, we have a... Uh, uh, like it's a steady increase and despite the fact that the increase sort of tapered off in attendance in 2017 as well it could also be related to the fursuit thing um, I think it's more related to that than anything else that's just sort of the thing we're going on right now but it does seem to be that the growth of Anthrocon is sort of normalized and um, I don't think it's going to be overtaking MFF anytime soon if it continues like just at its tick but that's fine like it's a great convention and a lot of people in the area love it and it and it's doing its thing and uh apparently it's certainly growing the thing in the city around it and they're creating new hotels you know and 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 so i think that you know it's it, i think it's still viable and if you know people enjoy it they will enjoy it if they don't then they don't and whatever here we have so that's about it um other than that uh it was good to meet all the people that i met um at the anthrocon there's way too many to list here um but anyways if you uh liked what you see kick that like kick the subscribe button kick a comment in the comment section um what was your favorite moment at ac and what was your worst or your most unfavorite moment at ac did you have a good ac or did it um or was it did it leave a sour taste um due to the things and i know some people who've had who had a um had a rough go of it and um and uh for those people i do apologize um life is harsh that way sometimes where when you're trying to enjoy yourself and other things get in the way and you can't really enjoy yourself and hopefully in time those unenjoyable elements will fade away and you'll find things that make you happy um <clears throat> That being said, I'm going to get the hop out of here. I'll see you again next week for another topic not related to AC for sure. Um, I'll probably be talking about some other things. Um, and I'll see you next time.